Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victolic VDC. I'm a programmer for Victolic Tools for Revit. Now today I wanted to make an update video on the new features and existing features of the procurement tool. Now the procurement tool was the very first tool that we made for Victolic Tools for Revit and we said at the time that if we weren't able to get a selection based bill of material out of Revit then we weren't going to go further developing an add-on and the procurement tool was the gateway to all these excellent productivity tools that we've put in Victolic Tools for Revit. So I'm going to touch on the original features of the procurement tool and then we can talk about the new features that you can find in there. So the procurement tool, like I said, is a selection based bill of material tool at its core, but there's a ton of other things that you can do with it. So let's make a selection and open it up and take a look. So this model here has a bunch of uh, Victolic components, but again, all of our tools are going to work with Victolic components as well as anyone else's. I'll make a selection. I'll just do this half right here and hit the procurement tool, which you can find up in the modify ribbon, or you can find it in the Victolic tools ribbon on the right hand side of the productivity tools. Okay, this very first tab here is the parts tab. This will give you a single line for every single piece that it finds in your selection. And if you notice in the background, as I'm clicking on each one of these, you'll see the selection changes. So right off the bat, one of the very first things you can do with the procurement tool is use it as a selection tool for something that's really difficult to select. I mean, maybe you're trying to get to the cap at the end and it's fighting you. You can always just procure everything around it grab it out of the table right here and just close the procurement tool and then you'll have it selected. Now along with using this as a selection tool, uh, each line that you click on will show you particular parameters on that particular family and let you edit some of them. So part number, Vic bag tag, area system and zone can each be updated line by line or by selecting a large number of them. There's some tools in here that will show you if this VIC system has uh, multiple values. You can see the VIC system here does have multiple values. Uh, but going down through this table, if you needed to set the area or the zone or uh, any of these parameters, you can do it by selection within here. Uh, normal Windows commands like Control A work within here as well. Uh, again, take a look in the background. Everything I selected in the table just caused everything in the background to select as well. So if I wanted to define these selected items in a particular area or zone, I could just go in here and type it in and click on update. Now there's a couple things in my selection that maybe I don't want to go into a bill of material. You can control that with this categories button right here. Uh, the mechanical equipment, for example, I'm not going to want to see that on my bill of material. And now that I've removed it from the categories button right here, the mechanical equipment is no longer showing. So right from this first tab, there's a couple of exports you can do. If I'd like to see this table as it is um, in Excel, there's uh, really a few options. I could come in here and hit Control A, and then hit Control C, and I could paste that right into Excel. It will retain its table format. I can also come down here to the export bill of material button right there with it set on detail and I'm going to get every field that the procurement tool has procured in there. It's going to be a very large table but this is a way for you to really just get a selection out of Revit and get it into Excel so you can manipulate that data. And if I want to see something that's a little bit more formatted and compact I can hit the summary button right here which will take like rows for example this particular size coupling 16 of them just got accounted for in this one row. And then click on the export bill of material button and it's going to ask me where I want to save this file. And it will give me a very detailed report in Excel uh, for everything that I have selected in Revit. There's some other options on this screen. You can flip this uh, entire bill of material from Imperial to metric. And you'll see that the nominal imperial sizes get converted to nominal metric sizes. And flip it back again. Now early on in our adventure into Victolic Tools for Revit, we noticed some native functionality in Revit was holding us back with nested components. Nested components were not getting the system abbreviation like their parent components were. Uh, so we put a little tool in here under the batch section to copy the system abbreviation from the parent and push it to the child into the VIC system. So then we could use that as a schedulable field to be able to get a full bill of material based on a piping system. 
Now there's two other features here on the parts tab, uh, the point export and the pipe optimization report. I'm going to save them for the end and we're going to move on to the spool tab. Now for anyone that's been using the assembly manager to create and manage assemblies and has been using the static bill of material feature in the assembly manager, then you've already been using the spool tab of the procurement tool. You just don't see it when it's passing by during the automated steps. The spool tab within the procurement tool is a place where you can customize and set up all of your column templates that you're going to use during assembly or even during the package manager steps of your project. The table within the spool tab is generated from the settings that you can find in these three buttons right here. From left to right, sorting is an opportunity for you to give it custom sorting options. The default settings is Vicmark ascending, uh, followed by field material, and then uh, pipe length descending, which will give you the longest pipe lengths first, and then by category. These settings don't often need to be changed. Once your company comes up with a standard, these don't often need to be adjusted. The second button here is categories. This is the same categories button you'll find on the first parts tab. Uh, this is a place for you to include or exclude certain categories within Revit from your bill of material. And here under columns, this is a place for you to really customize this table. You can pick and choose which fields you'd like to show. You can give them aliases. This will be the column headers. Uh, within certain parameters, like the custom column parameters, you can type in certain user parameters that may not be available in the list. Uh, as long as you type them in verbatim to what you see in the properties window, you should be able to procure certain parameters out of your families and fabrication parts and include them in your bill of material. Now, whatever customizations you do to these tables, you can always save them as templates. We have some example templates in here for you. Piping fabrication is our typical one. There's piping fabrication with a couple options as well. Uh, pipe length total is a very useful one. This would just do the size and description of a piece of pipe and then give you the total length of that uh, unique row. Uh, and the way this is set up that it only shows pipe is under filters here, there's a category equals pipe. So you can customize this however you want and make your own custom templates for it. Let's take a look at the pipe length total output. Now right here, this could be useful when uh, estimating and ordering pipe. Now back to piping fabrication. There are a couple fields within here that are customizable. Uh, of course, the mark, this is going to write right to Vic mark. So if I were to type in here 01, I can always type in here 02 as well. Um, this is going to write right to the Vic mark for these particular items. Uh, end prep can be updated and copied from other rows. And there's even tools in here to automatically do these mark numbers for you. So right here, Vic mark options, uh, giving a starting number of 01. I can do this uh, auto mark components running the batch. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite the Vic mark field and then do I want to run this on the entire table. And this function here will populate the Vic marks of everything in my selection. Okay, and if our active view in the background were a sheet, we could use this section right here to manually export the static bill of material. Now these are all functions that happen automatically during our spooling process and potentially during our packaging process. But the idea for those tools, they started here within the procurement tool. Okay, so let's talk about some of the new tools that you can find in the procurement tool. The first one I want to talk about is the point export tool. This is a feature within the procurement tool that will allow you to export the points and location points of certain families and get them out into a CSV file. So we have some hanger families that have embedded points on them. So let's use our hanger placement tool and start putting hangers on our drawing. Now we have a number of hangers on the drawing. We also have a point family that you can pull out of our ribbon as well and attach that to pads or attach that to equipment or whatever family that you're going to need to know the location of. Okay, so to get these point locations out, all you would do is highlight your model. You can run the procurement tool. So right here in the parts tab, you'll see the button in the bottom right for point export. This brings up this dialog, which will give you an option to auto number your points as you export them. 
So you can do a combination of variables and static text, and we'll just do uh, Vic area and a dash, just like that. Now at the moment, uh, Vic area I don't believe is populated, but you can use the parts tab within the procurement tool to populate that. So I'll make a selection here, click Control A, which will highlight everything, and then give everything an area. Okay, back to the point export. I'll start my numbering at 501 and then click OK. This is going to gather all the information of all of the points and put them into a CSV file. And here's the CSV file that gets exported. Take a look. You got the point number, the Y, the X, the Z. Uh, because these are hangers, rod diameter gets reported. And under description, just to help you identify what each row is, it gives you the name of the family it's attached to. Now the last tool I want to talk about is the pipe optimization report. This is a report and a tool that will show us the number of sticks that we're going to need for a job so it helps with estimation and it also gives us a cutting sequence that will minimize pipe waste. So we'll click it down here in the procurement tool and there's a number of options to customize the report. The maximum pipe length in this case is 21 feet with one inch of minimum pipe waste, meaning that a 21 foot stick of pipe may not give you 21 usable feet. Uh, so we allow an inch at the end of this, but you can customize this however you want. And then even accounting for the blade width for each cut, because that does make a difference down the length of the pipe. We have a couple different optimization methods. Best fit is going to be the fastest one to generate. There's also optimized, low, medium, and high, which just represent the complexity of the algorithm it's going to run through. And the more complex, the longer this process will take. I'm going to leave it on best fit and just hit print. The pipe optimization report is an HTML document that will open in your favorite browser. It'll give you information about your project at the top, along with today's date. Uh, next would be the section that talks about the number of pipe lengths that are needed to perform this operation. And then for each of the pipe lengths, it gives you a cut sequence that will help you minimize waste and then tell you what your actual waste is per piece of pipe. So that's the Victaulic procurement tool. It's a selection-based bill of material tool with options for point exports, pipe optimization, and customized data tables. Thank you so much for watching.